Hey guys, so today I am starting a new monthly challenge and this one is intended to sort of build your portfolio and level up your skills. And you can find a link to that challenge in the description below. Um, and it starts out with a portrait and I don't really do a whole lot of portraits, um, of myself at least, because I never really feel like I can do a very good job of doing it justice. But I have a, um, a mirror right here and unfortunately there is no easy way for you guys to see what I look like right at this moment I guess I could like dual set up a camera um but that would show the rest of my room and my studio is a mess and I don't really feel like cleaning it up so I'm just gonna go ahead I guess and get started and then maybe I'll include a photo or something in the editing process we'll figure it out we'll get this handled so usually when I start with any sort of um head drawings face drawings that sort of thing I usually start with some really basic constructive head anatomy so I start with a sphere and then I divide that sphere into fourths one going uh, vertically and one going horizontally and then I sort of ex let me see if I can get it better uh, so I sort of extend that sphere into kind of like a spade shape And I might have to draw this portrait several times because as I'm explaining, it's actually kind of distracting from me drawing, but I want to demonstrate this for you guys. So we've got this sort of spade shape. And since I am drawing my own face, I'm working from a specific reference. So this is not just a generic woman's face. And I have sort of, um, I guess a long pointy chin kind of, not, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but my jaw is a little bit longer and more oval than it would be round. And I have kind of a, a long, narrow face. And then on the horizontal line, you want to divide the face into five eye widths. And I like to start from the middle and draw an eye in the middle and then the two actual eyes on the two sides. And then you wanna make sure there's enough room on the other sides for there to be another eye width. And then I have a really long, almost a uh, pug nose. sketching this out in color pencil partially so you guys can see what I'm doing because you can't see it with the non-photo blue and also because I don't really intend to get too fussy with this today and I have stopped drawing because I'm trying to get a little garbage can that I empty my pencil shape shavings pencil that kind of day today um yes trying to get my garbage can open And um, you guys have probably recently seen the 90 or so human A facial studies I did in November. So drawing faces from reference is really not something I don't do often. I do um, figure studies daily, but I, um, and I'm just filling the time while I sharpen my pencil, so sorry. But I really don't draw myself often, again, because I don't feel like I do myself justice. And I've noticed that um, when it comes to artists and portraits, we tend to draw ourselves a lot cuter than we actually are, or we draw ourselves like really grotesque looking as kind of like a joke. And I don't know. I mean, I have no problems drawing cute cartoon girls all day long, but I just feel like it's wrong to represent myself as, you know, anything that I'm not. It's 
so right now I'm sort of refining my features, refining the shape of my face based on what I'm seeing in the mirror that I have right there. And I'm drawing a larger circle around my eyes that's going to sort of um, indicate, you know how your eyes have sort of like this depression, this depressed area in your face? Um, so I usually do that, the two eye circles, to help indicate that. And now I'm blocking in the sweater I'm wearing because it's covering my neck. So one of the nice things, nice things about drawing in color pencil or directly in color pencil is if you make a mistake, you pretty much have to start all over again, which means you get twice the the drawing practice in. I like it though because it's also less prone to smearing than using graphite. Oh, it looks like those eyes are actually off kilter a little bit because I'm drawing at an angle because I'm trying to suit the needs of recording and see my mirror and etc whatever you don't want excuses and then i have this massively heavy amount of bangs because for two years my hairdresser has been cutting my bangs <laughs> wrong <laughs> And I keep telling her and she, every time, I've, I've talked to you guys about this a lot. Every time it's a fight, I'm like, cut them shorter. Ooh, but it's not, people aren't gonna, it's not attractive. I don't care. I can't see. My hair grows so fast, it doesn't matter. It'll be way too long in about two weeks. Well, you can come in. Literally, every time I go to get a haircut, I am about to go to Louisiana, it seems like. So it's like, no, I actually can't come in in the time period you guys have for doing fix-ups. Because by the time it's a problem, I'm going to be in another state. Okay, so I've got the basic basics, I guess, of my face sketched in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sort of tighten things up and refine them. And also maybe start adding some shadows. Basically though, the same construction methods that I use to construct like cartoony, anime-esque, even the, the chibi stuff that I do with the, the super um, stylized proportions, it's all based on the same method of facial construction where I draw a sphere, then I draw the plane of the face, which is sort of like a spade on a shovel, and then I refine that. And it's really just a matter of proportion. I 
And I actually, because I'm at a weird angle, I made my face quite a bit um, wider than it actually is because at the angle I was drawing at, it felt like it just seemed longer than it was. So now I'm getting on top of it and I can see that I draw myself a little squatter than I actually am. So I'm trying to fix that a little bit. Fortunately, I have just all this like super heavy <laughs> dark brown hair that I can just use to help narrow my features up a bit. All right, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil so I can get a little bit more of a point and hopefully get a little bit of finer detail in there. I think I am going to do a cartoony poit poitrait, portrait next and um, that way, maybe we can demonstrate how this, these principles can be applied to um, a different type of face. So I'm still going to draw a portrait of myself. I've still got a mirror. I moved my mirror over. You can see it over there, but now I can push this thing up a little bit on my very, very crowded desk. So I'm going to stay consistent and still do it in color pencil. All right. So, um, when doing a cartoony-ish, or a, I guess a more manga style, however you want to call it, um, the way I normally draw is kind of inspired by like super cartoony manga styles like Mitsuru Adachi and uh, Takahashi Rumiko. Uh, those sort of bouncy 80s styles which almost feel kind of like old Disney because they are so cartoony and stylized. So I still start off with the ball and I still start off with the plane, but I don't usually draw cheekbones unless somebody has like super prominent cheekbones. I usually go for softer faces. So I'm going to draw that chin. And it might take me a couple of attempts to draw myself in a cartoony style. So definitely going to exaggerate some things. So I still have the face. It's technically four eyes wide now because there's a half eye on each side. Then uh, the nose, always, my own nose, because I have this really weird <laughs> nose. Um, I've it's been described to me, and I have described it as like kind of a French nose, but um, it doesn't really fall into those normal categories of noses because it's not snub and it's not pug and it's not hawk and it's not any of those. It's just kind of like big and pointed up, like a ski snow slope. Sorry, and um, it it in a front view and a 4-4 four four view, you know, it's like really almost a snub nose or a pug nose, but in profile, it's just like this long upturned nose. Whatever, y'all don't, y'all don't care. I'm just, it's always hard for me to draw, okay guys? Because it just doesn't really cartoonify very well. That's why I gave Kara a weird nose. We don't have the same weird nose, just for the record, but because I have a weird nose and I get kind of tired of like the quintessential cutesy white girl nose getting drawn on everybody, because who has that nose really? And I also have kind of a lopsided grin, so why not? And 
And since my hair has sort of fallen into a new position, why not draw it? Because it'll... Oh yeah, when are you asked me to show you how to draw hair? So um, usually I start out with the bangs and I draw the hair in before I get too far with the face, but after I've sort of knocked in the basic facial features because that gives me an idea of where to place things. And then I will sort of block in The rest, I mean, I wouldn't really call the way I draw hair like um, any specific style. I usually try to keep it pretty simple and cartoony. And then after I've sketched in all of the masses of hair, I start refining some. And for some reason today, my hair wants to be super wavy. And sometimes it takes me a couple of attempts to find the hair gesture that I'm looking for. So you might see multiple lines when I'm sketching. And uh, if I were doing this for any more refined piece of work, that would be edited out in some capacity, erased or inked around that or whatever. Um, but since this is just a sketch, I'm not really concerned about that. So that would be like a really rough cartoony gesture of my hair since it is getting progressively wilder as uh, I am sans hat. And I would like a fresh point on my pencil sharpener. Except, I mean my pencil, except I can't find the sharpener. Oh man, I like sketching with Prismacolors because they have good colors available. Like I'm using Chestnut right now and they, um, you know, pretty much every art store has them open stock, but they are the most prone to breaking off in the sharpener pencils I've ever used. And it seems like every time I've sharpened my pencil for this tutorial slash demonstration, uh, my lead has broken off into my sharpener. And I'm using a good sharpener. I'm using a, a Kum Long Point magnesium sharpener, and those tend to be excellent sharpeners. But this Prismacolor is throwing up problems. I may have dropped it. That might have been the problem. It may have been dropped when it was in the store. Because unfortunately with Prismas, if you drop it on a hard surface, like a linoleum or a concrete floor, that can shatter the lead inside the body so even if you're using a good sharpener, it's gonna shatter. So let's refine that weird nose of mine. And my eyes, I usually, after I sketch them in, I usually start with the upper eyelid. And then when I'm doing cartoony stuff, I usually do kind of like a heavier side slash under the eye kind of thing. All right, so that is a self-portrait in a more cartoony style. As you guys can see, I use a lot of the same principles, but the proportions are changed. And let's say while you're working on your portrait, you realize, and you're doing it in color pencil like this, you realize that, um, you know, maybe the proportions on one of them was off. Because as you do more of them, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna become more familiar with your own proportions. You're bad like I am, and you never draw yourself. Um, so you wanna fix it. Well, you can do that really easily. 
um, if it's not to turn in, if this is just for your own reference or you're designing characters and you changed your mind about the proportions of a character's body, you can do that really easily with um, some sticky notes. And I'm actually looking for some. I'll be right back. So I have here some inexpensive sticky note tape from Target, but you can use like post-it notes, whatever. Um, I'm not actually making a very large correction, so it shouldn't require a whole lot. So I realized I drew my nose too low, so I know that looks silly, but I just put some of that sticky tape on, or sticky note really, on, and I Ugh, this stupid sharpener keeps eating my legs. And I sharpen my pencil into a nubbin, which is all that's going to be left after this is finished. All right, that works. And I can go back over it. and do something that is a little more accurate. Or at least attempt it, who knows? Ooh, that's really gonna be a piggy looking nose on me because I am drawing it from a weird angle. My mirror was, um too high up so it's giving me like an upshot of the inside of my nose. Oh, I almost like that other nose I did better than this one. But if you don't like what you do on the sticky tape, the cool thing is you can peel it off and get rid of it. You're not stuck with it. Whatever. That's really a piggy nose. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, I honestly like the too big nose better than I like the piggy nose I just gave myself, so. Now y'all know why I don't draw myself very often. All right, so I think we have time for one more and I'm just going to show you guys how to, how I would then break this down into like a chibi sort of proportion set or something cutie. So we still start let me see if I can move my camera a little better. We still start with that circle. We still start with the vertical and the horizontal lines down the center of the circle. But this time, we're not gonna draw as long a facial plane. And we're gonna do the eyes much bigger. And we're also going to do I like chibis that have like little button or circle or triangle noses. I don't like the little like whatever noses like that personally. And we're gonna draw the circles around the eyes larger. You're gonna exaggerate the lopsided grin. It's a little bit of a longer face than I would normally do for chibis. So while I am making a few uh, different stylistic choices here and there, I it's most of the changes are coming from where things are positioned and how large I'm drawing them. So for super cartoony hair like this, I'm gonna keep it really simple. 
and just a couple overarching shapes that really sort of define what my hair is doing today. And then I have these big heavy eyebrows, so I really want to exaggerate that for like cute effect. And then we have these jug ears, so I draw a little handle like that and then a little knob like that. I'll sketch in the shine marks and just sort of flat color the rest of that in. So that's day one of a specific self-improvement challenge and I did three versions of a self-portrait. Uh, fairly realistic or about as realistic as I usually tend to go without slapping down a grid. Uh, cartoony and then chibi style. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you'll forgive my grousing while I was doing the portrait. Um, I hope maybe you learned something from this or felt inspired by this, even if you're just going to do the art challenge yourself for the sake of improvement. It's always good to be able to draw things in a variety of styles and to know how to tweak elements to get what you want. And finding a style is really about tweaking the elements into something that suits you or what you're trying to accomplish. So I demonstrated three ways to draw a face using the same basic facial construction. I hope you will go out, go home, pick up a pencil, whatever, and try that out for yourself. Um, I recommend starting with reference and just sort of trying to see how the reference meshes with the methods I demonstrated here. Um, it took me a lot of drawing faces from reference to sort of internalize that sort of drawing structure. And if you guys need to see that particular type of facial construction in greater detail, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you guys how to do a full turnaround. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will probably see you again tomorrow with day two from this challenge. Although to be really honest, these are probably not even gonna get put up until like months after. But hey, that's cool. You, you will maybe have seen it on Instagram. So have a great day guys. I'll see you later. This is Becca Hilburn. Bye.